and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, Trent Mel. Trent is CEO of First Cobalt Corporation, which can be traded as FCC on the TSX Venture. Trent, thanks for being here with us today. Thank you, Jeff. Pleasure. Well, we've heard a lot in the news recently with the Tesla Gigafactory and the news out of uh, Tesla building uh, one of the big battery uh, manufacturing centers in Nevada. We've heard a lot of news about lithium. Now we're beginning to hear about cobalt. There's been some companies such as First Cobalt that's been able to close on some significant money to explore for cobalt in Canada. Talk to us a little bit about some of the recent events and what's, why investors are so excited in cobalt and in your little company called First Cobalt. Okay, sure. Uh, happy to do so. You know, the cobalt macro story is what really appealed to me. So when I joined the company just, uh, just, just a short while ago, uh, the story was one really of batteries, battery storage, and whether you're talking about grid storage or, or I guess more notably these days, uh, electric vehicles, and then before that, portable devices. Cobalt content in lithium-ion batteries, despite its name, has actually uh, taken on increased prominence. And of the battery types, the cobalt uh, heavy heavy batteries uh, seem to uh, to be predominating in the in the technological advances, uh, notably with uh, electric vehicles over the last two or three years. So that's that's the backdrop. And if you look back to last year, uh, just under half of the global demand for cobalt worldwide was for the battery market. So that sets us up for an interesting period, and if you believe the charts of a five percent annual growth over the over the next few years, you can see that the uh, the fundamentals are there. Uh, conversely, on the supply side, you've got sixty five percent of uh, cobalt coming out of the DRC, so that's elephant country, and then a smattering of, of production opportunities around the world. So there's not there's not many ways to play it, and that's why you've seen a number of juniors pop up. Um, first, cobalt. Our our strategy out of the gate was to distinguish ourselves from the other juniors by one being a cobalt leverage play, which, which we all want to do, but, but secondly, building the team with, uh, with a bunch of seasoned operators, uh, you know, collectively, we've all got some between 15 and, you know, 30 plus years of experience, whether it be running, building, operating mines. And our first play was, was in Canada, but we don't intend to stop there. And if you'd like, I'm happy to talk about that asset. Trent, before we get into the, the asset that you've acquired and the Keeley frontier, um, the Silver Center, Center Ontario property. We've noticed the the team is being has been is is being built at First Cobalt, and I'm wondering if you can go into a little more color about the team. I know that um, Ross Phillips and Ian Stalker, and a little bit more about yourself and your background. Sure, happy to do so. So, the I guess the, the conception and the you know, this was the company that came about through through an RTO. Uh, Bob Cross, who has a, a long track record of uh, very successful startups, um, had the idea in him and a, and a number of other uh, mining execs in Vancouver uh, conceived of the idea. They hired me, and, and we put together the beginnings of a board. My my own background, uh, I was a Bay Street lawyer before starting uh, my mining career at Barrick Gold, and uh, most of my career in the mining space, you know, about 16, 17 years, uh, has been with the producer side. A lot of it in gold, but I spent a little bit of time at Sherrit. I spent a little bit of time in, in platinum palladium. Um, and as a junior executive, I ran, a, a, I was CEO of a company called Falco Resources, uh, which has the, the old horn uh, historic mine in Rouen Aranda, Quebec. So so that, that's my background. The last two years, I stepped out of the mining industry and, and was raising capital for juniors, raised about $300 million for Canadian juniors last year. Uh, but then as the, uh, as the base metals market picked up, I, I was enticed to, to come back and join the team. Our, our gang that we have here is still very much at inception. We're very getting very close to, on the management side, uh, appointing or hiring a, a VP exploration, uh, as well as an engineer to help us evaluate project opportunities around the world. Uh, on the board level, I would highlight, well, as an advisor, we've got Ian Stalker, who's got you know, a couple of decades of experience in Africa, which is quite pertinent to, to what we're doing. He's our CEO of K92. Uh, we also, uh, also from K92, have Brian Solarchuk uh, on our on our board. Uh, we've got Ross Phillips from Sherrod, uh, Chris Reed from the uh, the oil patch. So that's that's the start. But I think as you, what you'll see over the next, you know, call it uh, four to six weeks or so, is that we're going to start to beef up the board and management team and start to uh, articulate a, a clearer strategy. We're really uh, we're barely through the first inning with this company. 
So let's talk about the first asset that you're compiling a sort of a 3D model on the data, the Silver Center Mining Camp. Why have you started with this project? Now, this is an exciting one for me because it, I liken it to what we were doing at Falco, which is taking historic data in an old world-class operation and, and seeing what modern geoscience and engineering and mining practices can can uh, can can see, I guess, as a modern opportunity. So Falco is an example. A lot of the old gold camps in uh, in Canada that have been redeveloped, whether you're looking at uh, Malartic, Detour, Young Davidson, it's the same story. These are things that were operated years ago. So the asset that we've acquired uh, was in a town, now a ghost town, called Silver Centre. And back in the day, in the 1920s and 30s, uh, the twin towns of Cobalt, Ontario, and Silver Centre were the biggest silver producers uh, in the world. Some 600 million ounces of silver produced out of those two camps. But in addition to that, there was about 50 million pounds of cobalt. Uh, we quickly honed in on Silver Centre as our preferred camp because we were able to amass a very large land package, uh, 21,000 hectares. And we uh, were able to option 100% of the, where that's in process, 100% of the old Keeley and Frontier mines, which were uh, once separate operations and now integrated. We like it because of its scale, 3.3 million pounds of copper, uh, most of that in the 20s and 30s, 20s, 30s and 40s, uh, 19 million ounces of silver, so some great credits there. But uh, it also had the best cobalt to silver ratio of all of the 25 major major mines that operate at the time. So a lot of potential, and it's early days, and as you referenced, Jeb, we, we're going to do some 3D modeling. There is some data there, and before we start wasting money on uh, on, on drilling and whatnot, we want to make sure that uh, that we know where to point the drills, where we're going. So it'll be a question of modeling, doing some geophysics, hitting the ground once the snow melts, um, and then uh, and then taking a, a more disciplined approach to identifying new structures. These were very very high grade uh, high grade beans, and uh, there there could and should be more there. And and what's nice is as a silver cobalt play, uh, you know the only other ways to get cobalt really are, are through cobalt and nickel op- uh, copper and nickel operations. So silver is an attractive start. Um, from there, we've got we've got ambitions, and that'll that'll take us outside of Canada. Recently, I you know at, P, at the PDAC con, convention, the largest mining conference uh, in the world, uh, possibly in, in Toronto, a lot of the talk was around cobalt, um, and the the uh, taking these historical uh, and updating. Um, talk to us about some of your plans uh, in detail. I know that you raised six million recently. Uh, talk to us about the buzz in the industry, and 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 more specifically, how you're going to use this this money to to advance this project. Yeah, the the cobalt space it, it was uh, it has heated up. There's no question. This is uh, it feels the way lithium did. Uh, at the at the, at the, I guess the start of that of that rush a year or two ago, and uh, I don't think it's going to let up given the supply demand fundamentals I, I spoke about. Um, it, it, it's to a point where it's getting a little silly. I think I think people are uh, recasting companies and assets that that frankly aren't cobalt plays and and trying to uh, you know get the wind at their sails on the on the back of a of an attractive commodity. Uh, the, the purpose of our fi- financing our six million dollar raise that we did. Um, and the capital structure we put together and some of the people we have back in the company was to try to find the best opportunities around the planet, or at least half of the planet, where we can get good exposure to cobalt. To my knowledge, I don't know in modern times, certainly, if there's ever been a, a focus on, on finding cobalt as a primary sort of corporate commodity, because it's always a byproduct of, of, of again, to a typically copper and nickel place. Uh, cobalt is often viewed as a byproduct. We want to view it at a minimum as a as a as a co-product and give investors who want exposure to this battery hot commodity um, the best opportunity to get upside and exposure to the cobalt market. So where we see ourselves going, um, and I, this was validated through a lot of our meetings at the PDAC conference, uh, we, we wouldn't see ourselves going to Australia. That's a little far for a Canadian junior, but certainly North America, uh, Europe, and Africa, lots of uh, hunting opportunities there. Uh, the reason we put together a uh, sophisticated, we are putting together a sophisticated team of, of operators um, and, and, and mine builders uh, is because we need to get into the DRC. I think if you're going to be successful and be serious in this play, you need to go where the elephants are. And the Katanga province is that place. It's a mature camp, uh, still lots of ground to be staked. And uh, now with the Ontario play behind us, I think you should expect that we will be very actively uh, uh, talking to the counterparties that we can partner with in, uh, in the Congo. 
Trent, as we conclude here, what would be your sort of final message that investors should maybe take a look at the cobalt sector and and especially first cobalt? Yeah, I think I think as we get into this, what what investors are, are going to realize is, is it's very uh, very difficult to find a pure 100% cobalt operation or property around the world. 95% of production is byproduct, so there needs to be an appreciation for the overall economics and, and an appreciation of how the uh, uh, how the the co the co metal credits are are going to are going to work in the economics. Uh, ultimately, you've got to look at the management team because we're a little bit in new territory. We we, we all believe that cobalt is going to be a, a sustaining, um, sustained strong to the market for the for the next few years with the with the battery market driving that. Um, but it's it's a little bit it's not it's not it's unlike a, a gold which goes up and down and so we know where to go back to and where to hunt. This is this is a new lens that's being applied for a specific metal that that as I say is often sort of taken as a credit and and to now have that sort of front and center in your in your dashboard for an exploration team you really need to make sure you've got the talent. Uh, you need to have the experience in the right jurisdictions. You need to have the capital behind you. So it's not going to be an easy play for a junior company to to be successful in, but I think there will be a few, and, and I'm uh, quite hopeful First Cobalt will be among those. Trent Mel, CEO of First Cobalt, which can be traded as FCC on the TSX Venture. You can get more info at firstcobalt.com. Thank you, trend for being here with us today for explaining to us the the great demand for cobalt going forward especially the battery market which is growing and how you uh, and your company is focused on uh, on looking for assets and and advancing assets uh in in cobalt thank you for being here with us today i appreciate the opportunity to talk to your audience have a great day